Welcome back. I needed a battery tester to go through the, some old batteries that I have lying around as part of a lab cleanup, we'll call it. And well, where can I get a battery tester and not really have to pay anything for it? Of course, my dad's house to the empire of dirt. And I asked him, I know you have a battery tester. Oh yeah, don't spend any money on those. I got about three or four of them lying around. Cool, I know I came to the right place. Thanks, Dad. Well, he gives me this one. This thing is as old as I can remember. Uh, th we've, we've had to have this since th the 90s, some point. I don't know. I'll have to see if I can find the model number online here. This is from Sears Craftsman. It's a model number 82307. And the difference between a uh, voltmeter or a multimeter or anything like that, like one of these guys, and a battery tester is the battery tester is going to place a small load on the battery to actually test the voltage correctly. This one's going to tell you yeah, it's 1.5 volts, but the minute you go to put it into something, it's not going to work because there's no load placed on it when you do this. It just gives you the voltage. Where this will tell you if it's good, replace it or whatnot. So really you need to have, well, both of them if you're doing any kind of electronics tinkering, honestly. This one's nice because it tests button cell batteries, AAA, AA, C's and D's. It also does three volt lithiums and all kinds of other funky batteries, um, 22.5 volt, 12 volt, nine volt, so on and so forth, and even photo batteries, which as digital cameras become more prevalent, this becomes more obsolete, I guess you could say, but there's no battery in this. You just select it to whatever you want and you touch the leads. Well, unfortunately, the original leads broke. Dad decided to replace it with alligator clips. And uh, I kind of joked with him and said, well, Dad, how are you supposed to actually test the battery out? And he says, well, for example, if it's a 9-volt battery, of course, you set it to 9 volts here. And then all you got to do is just clamp this right to the terminals. But, yeah, it's not, it's not the best idea. Of course, this one's dead. But, you know, you can't really, you can't really get this on there right. It's kind of fiddly. And then I said even more jokingly, well, okay, so what if it's one of these? You can't just touch this. This is one of those like enclosed alligator clips. It's not like one of these alligator clips where the metal's exposed on it. You know, that would have been a little better. <laughs> kind of kind of threw it at me. Well, you want the thing or not? I says, I'll take it. I'll take it. Just stick some nails in there, Chris. That's all you got to do. Just stick a little uh, piece of wire in there. So I took a piece of wire and bent a little crank on it like this just to keep it steady. And yeah, it works, you know, but it's still a little fiddly. And then I noticed, but it's not really working. Is it the battery? Well, if you take the positive end over here and you put it on this dimple and you hold it up and then you stick this on here like that, it works. And I said, it's gotta be something in here. When you unscrew this, it's holding on by a thread. It's, he did his best and it worked, I'm sure, but we're gonna do one better for this. You may remember, I did a review on this meter I also did a review of this meter, which I never put back in the case, just frankly, because I wasn't too keen on it. Uh, by the way, I will do follow-ups on these. I get a ton of, I don't want to say hate comments, but I get a ton of people saying I was way too harsh on these because I was trying to trying to match it up with an old fluke and they're like, there's no matching up a multi-hundred dollar fluke for an eight dollar meter. I mean, of course not. but. I just was trying to show what quality versus cheap looks like. Now there's a step above these in between the expensive guy and these cheap guys we'll take a look at in a future video once I get the money to buy one of them. But this one, it's all right. I've used it a bunch of times. I just don't want to use it on any of the higher voltage AC stuff. You know, I'm not going to stick it into the mains. You can, but I don't really want to. I'll save this all for the low voltage stuff. But this one I didn't even put back together. But the point of mentioning these is of course they came with test leads and this one in particular came with this set of leads right here and another thing people point out get better leads they'll work a lot better so yeah we're gonna re we're gonna re-explore those but in the meantime I still have these things and I liked this meter better and the leads I had for it were getting kind of funky so I just said I'm just gonna take that put it in my bag and I'll use these leads we'll keep it like that and I'll leave my nice expensive fluke here for doing stuff in the lab and this I won't put back together until I need it. So then I saw this, obviously much longer after I did this stuff, and I said, hmm, what can I do with this? Oh, 
I still have all the parts from that meter over there, including the test leads that came with this meter. And I'll show you what happened to them. I mean, it's probably common. They're very similar to the other ones there. The wire went all funky. The insulation actually broke right away. Well, that ain't no good. You know, it's kind of a safety hazard if you're doing this on AC or anything like that. You don't want that flapping in the breeze like that. So then I went, oh, well, there's a win-win situation. I mean, it's not the probes that came with it. You can't stick this back in here. You can probably, that's eh, a little too small for that. I was gonna say, you probably could slip it in here, but you can't. Oh, oh, by the way, originally, in case you didn't see it, these used to wrap around, come through, and then the probe sat in here. And it's been a long time since that happened. So, focus of this video now, six minutes into it, we're gonna take the screw out. We'll take a quick poke around inside here and see what she looks like. And then I'm gonna replace these uh, alligator leads here with these guys because it's going to serve me a much better purpose obviously uh, you know frankly over these things uh, it'd be nice if they were the kind of probes like this that you can actually stick alligator clips onto they look like this and I know they work with the fluke it might work with this but you can just go ahead and just shove this right in here and then you can get alligator leads on the end of it but you know it's intermittent you're just going to you're just going to touch the battery with it and read the voltage you're not going to leave it on forever it's not like a meter so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and crack the back of this here. It's just a single screw. It's really easily put together. And unfortunately, there's no date code or anything in here, so we can't look at it that way. And to fully get this thing apart, we're actually gonna to have to do a little bit of desoldering here because you can see there's two leads that come up here to the meter. And then these leads come in from the back here with little knots in them. So we'll have to uh, pull some of this wire through like this. In fact, I'm probably just gonna take those ends right off. But these are all individual resistors. And every time you turn this knob to a different position, you're basically just enabling a different uh, resistor here in line with, I believe, the positive. Unfortunately, as you can see, all the traces are on the other side of the board. So we will need to see that. And I don't know if it's because the age of this unit that's why they're blue. Or if these are specific types of resistors, I mean, they do have a red band, band on the end of it here and they are four uh, band resistors. So I'm gonna have to do just a touch of uh, actual research on this to see. But yeah, it's pretty cool. It's just a box of resistors. I mean, like I said, it's putting a load on there and well, a resistor is a load. So let me go ahead. I got the soldering iron heated up. This is of course, not lead-free solder because it's too old for that. Uh, and while I'm there, I'll take these off. Now it looks like these are actually soldered from the top, but there should be through hole. We'll go ahead and investigate that. All right, let's take a look at this. So I popped off the little front cover here so we can actually see the mechanism inside. And it's basically just a bunch of windings around the shaft here. So when you apply a current to it, it'll go ahead and move this needle. And you may know this, there's this little shaft down here, we'll call it. And there's actually a little plastic screw here with a pin on the other side of it. You can see it just pointing downward there. When this is on top here, you can actually use a flat bladed screwdriver and you can adjust this little plastic screw to kind of zero this out, like a calibration, I guess you could say. It has a really nice detent in here. We'll take a look at that in just a moment, but you can see the back side of it. There's just these little wiper fingers. And for the age of this thing and for the use it's had, it's actually in really good condition. Um, the little button over here is exactly that. It's just a solid metal button with some threads on the end of it that comes through. And, it's, and there's two screws at the top, one down the bottom. And instead of a screw over here, it's just a nut so it can have the board sit on top of it. And here's the board. As you can see where all those little wipers connect to here. There's no grease or anything like that on here. And the, the traces are actually in really great shape. I'm actually really surprised by this. I figured it was gonna be kind of grungy in there, but now it's actually in good shape. These big blobs though, you can see, I'm not a big fan of how they look. It does look like they soldered it from the other side, but we're gonna, we're gonna clean that wall up and make that nice. And then up here is uh, uh, where the, the wires come through, as you can see, for the meter. So they're gonna connect up here. So if we follow this out, uh, I'm not gonna do a complete teardown of this, but these are all individual resistor points here in the middle. 
and they go to these little pads here as you can see this common ring in the middle here goes across and pretty much all these jumping across here are all resistors the black wire here is going to be the ground so we can follow that all around here and see so this is the ground of the meter it goes through positive comes through here this is obviously where the uh, the little screw is going to be for that nut they see where it's on the back side over here so that makes contact we can follow that goes all around over here and well if you want to trace that out you can go ahead and pause the video or take a screenshot or whatever and of course I'll give you the other side of the board yeah I mean it's it's not a complex thing it's certainly not a multimeter or anything like that it's an old school old reliable battery meter there's nothing more it has to have on it you know it's an old reliable piece of equipment that's really all I could say about it so now let's do the task at hand oh yeah of course I'll try to show you this first there does seem to be a little bit of that kind of uh, glue over here it's almost like it's almost like super glue it might keep this screw from actually coming out or, or not sometimes that stuff dries up oh see this is spring loaded so I have to be careful here and yeah there's some ball bearings okay cool so that's why it's got such a good detent so these ball bearings here I'll put them in my hand also really good condition no rust or anything like there on it and it's actually interesting it's a little offset you see they're not dead across from each other and there are two springs in here holding those in and of course the other side over here you can see all those little detents where those ball bearings go into good design I don't know how much this cost back in the day but that's a really great design uh, I know from looking at this cheap meter here the detent while it snaps it's not the same it's, it's very plasticky this is this is nice this is a very positive detent but you know some people don't really don't really care about that I do I can definitely tell a nice piece of equipment when it has a nice detent like that also this should be keyed if you notice there's a large hole and a small hole and the same thing over here there's a large peg and a small peg so those will fit in so this will fit in a certain way so you can't mess it up when we reassemble it that's it that's really all this meter has in it so I'm gonna go ahead just clean this up a little bit we'll get this board cleaned up here and hopefully get those old probes put back onto this so we don't have these uh, these wires oh and incidentally this is what the end of the wire looked like you can see it was all just kind of tarnished and it wasn't gonna make good connectivity anyway uh, it, it is important because you can skew your results you might have a battery that's actually good that's showing it's not good because you don't have a good connection to the meter of course you know that goes without saying so let's go ahead and clean this up now one of the things I had to do is just remove these little rubber grommets because the hole is just a little too small for these newer wires uh, since these are made for multimeter and thousand volt capacity or at least it claims it to be it has to have a thicker insulation on it so obviously those had to come out uh, but we will put a knot at the end of them to keep it from coming back loose again, of course. And just taking a quick look at this, we want to make sure we obviously put the right lead on the right side. So red was on the left and the black was on the right. And just to verify that, we could see the meter went in in this orientation like this. And then this pad here went in the back like that. So if you flip it over, if we remember the side with the uh, actual nut on it, which belonged over here is on this side so that's a clear indicator which side this goes on and hopefully you could see what I mean how much insulation there is versus conductor that's a very small strand of cable but we got it to the length I want we got the knots tied in it already now it's just a matter of getting these soldered back on and one thing worth mentioning is those actually weren't mounted through the hole these are actually like almost like a rivet you can see it's just kind of a pad on the other side so we'll have to uh, just wrap it around this and solder it in place of course it may help just actually pre-tin these wires over here first and there we go looks good to me and just a matter of getting this all put back together now I'm gonna say that looks pretty darn good to me so I have a D cell battery right here we're gonna check out I know this is uh, pretty pretty full so we'll put this down to the D range here and this should work just the way we want it to now perfect now you can see it's not it's not going all the way to the end of good but it's still good They're, they've had some life taken out of them but that's what I want to say and of course let's 
pretty good length of cord to this thing, so that's nice and handy. And well, yeah, not really much more to add to this particular video. I'm pretty happy with the way that came out. And uh, well, if you guys aren't subscribed to this channel already, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. You can click the link right here to do so. And while you're at it, if you'd mind checking out my second channel, PTS Extras, I'd appreciate that. And you can also check out the other videos over here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.